Hello. Okay, so I'm hopefully going to make a short video today. Um, not doing anything too fancy. I just got an order in. Well, actually, I got this yesterday, and I started cleaning up last night. One thing led to another, and then it ended up being 1 a.m. Um, anyway, uh, so I haven't even opened this yet. I just ordered three Game Boy Advance SPs from Japan for you. Uh, I also got a few games here. I got Metroid 2, Castlevania 1, Castlevania 2, or, well, vice versa, and uh, Tetris here. And they all work, and they're all in nice shape, but that's that's besides the point. Um, but I, I just got these. I haven't even opened them yet. The bottom black one doesn't even have a battery or a battery cover, and the pink one... Okay, so the bottom black one and the pink one both have the same problem. Uh, per the description, it said, uh, we checked, we were unable to power it on, which is pretty typical. This one, however, should work, um, but the problem is that the speaker does not. So the volume's all the way up, turn it on, does work, but there's no noise. Uh, but we'll we'll come back to that. It's these two that I really want to take a look at. Mostly the pink one, but the black one too. I have a feeling we just put a battery in this thing and it'll work just fine. And this battery is probably not charged. Oh, what do you know? It is, and it works just fine. Let's see if it boots a game. That works fine. Game Boy Advance. That looks like it works fine too. Yeah. Um, oh, let's check one more thing. Let's see if it charges. And yeah, it even charges. So Oh, it stopped charging. Oh, because my charger shut off. I'm using a uh, battery here. And uh, either this battery is fully charged or it's damaged. That battery's pretty bloated. I shouldn't be using it for testing, but, you know, whatever. All right, this one. So, yeah, easiest fix ever, right? Just need battery and a battery cover here. Oh, that's awful. That's going to be a pain in the ass to get out. Someone stripped, stripped that screw. Might have to break out the Dremel or something. Whatever, I'll move on. So the pink one doesn't seem to work. Turn that off. It only charges for a second and then shuts off. Usually that means bad battery. Or bad fuse. Let's find out which... Or no battery. <laughs> that works too. Let's use a not sketchy battery. And what do you know? Front light works. That works fine. And let's try Game Boy again. Yeah. So this thing is actually super clean, aside from these stickers, but these will probably just peel off. Um, originally, I wanted to resell this one, but I, or excuse me, reshell this one, but I think I might just sell it because it's super clean. I just got to clean off these stickers, but I'll do that sometime another time. 
And of course it needs a new battery, but whatever, that's easy enough. Um, screw that down so I don't lose it. So that's two of three fixed in five minutes. Last one here. This one works, but has no sound. I'm betting I already know the issue, but I have to get this thing apart to find out. So, I'm going to try a flathead here. If that doesn't work, I'll try cutting a slot in that screw. With a Dremel and see if I can get it out that way. Oh, there we go. I was able to grip enough. So, just for reference, in case anyone wants to know, this is a 1.5, I'm guessing, since there's no units, 1.5 millimeter flathead. Okay. Is that battery bulging? Can't tell. I don't think so. This is weird. It's like one of the plastic cased ones. Usually the ones I see are wrapped. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm going to try out the uh, screwdrivers that come with these new Game Boy Advance shells. I usually use my uh, old screwdriver, but I mean, it's hard to give them a fair shake if you never actually use them, right? So like usual, there are six tri-wing screws, four long ones in each of the corners, and then two short ones uh, on the cartridge slot in the battery compartment. Once you've got all six out, this should just come off. Oh, got to take out all six. There we go. Dump out those extra screws before I lose them. All right. So aside from a good cleaning, I don't see anything wrong yet. But what you've got inside there are three more screws. These are Phillips. And they're nice and short. Or GIS I suppose. Probably not Phillips. it up to give me a little bit more slack on the ribbon there. Ooh. Looks like someone spilled something in this at one point. I don't know what, but whatever it is, it dissolved the solder mask a little. I don't see any water damage or any other corrosion though. So this speaker looks to be in really good shape. Uh, but the speaker itself might be bad. I'm getting nothing on the meter. Yep. That's probably the issue. So to test speakers, actually, let me get a... Uh, let me get another one here. I just got a bag of parts. Most of these are uh, old, used, good. But I have some speakers down here. And these are actually out of a DS console, but they're pretty much the same thing. So if you put your meter 
in the home. Oh, I thought these speakers were good. Is my meter not working? Hello, that's interesting. Well, hang on a minute. Let me go grab another meter. Be right back. Alright, ran and grabbed another meter. This one looks the exact same because it's the same model. And I even have the same probes on it. But anyway, this is why you always check your probes first. This one works. Okay, so this is the old speaker. Oh, actually it is good. 5.5 ohms. This is a new working speaker that I pretty sure works. Just about the same 5.4 ohms, 5.3. So, whatever my issue was, it's not the speaker. I will go ahead and put these back. The second less likelihood is that these contacts themselves aren't making good contact. Uh, these are just spring contacts here. Uh, they work by touching the board and applying force. There's no actual physical mechanical connection. So all I did I just bent them up a little bit. Put that back. And drop that back in there. Now I'm gonna Ooh. Okay, I will clean that and put that back together later. Um, uh, I'll put these three screws in. Otherwise, it'll fall apart with me handling it. Just the three Phillips screws. I gotta say, these screwdrivers are actually pretty decent. I don't have any complaints yet. Let's put in the power switch too. And the battery. Still nothing. I should check uh, if I have sound via headphones, but I don't know if I have an adapter for this. I don't think I do. Of course, Nintendo in their infinite wisdom decided not to put a uh, headphone jack on this thing. Hmm. I'll try that other speaker just in case. Aside from that spill on the D-pad, this motherboard itself looks super clean. I don't see any immediate issues. Works for both Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. The next option, especially since that spill is in the vicinity, it could be this uh, potentiometer here. Well, let's check that while we have it open. I think it's just a 1K potentiometer. Put 
course, I don't know what it's supposed to read, so... That reads 20. And if we bring that up, it still reads 20. Oh, there we go. That's probably it. Pins 2 and 3. When it's all the way up, it reads 20. When it's all the way down, it reads 4-ish. Helpful if I had a good one to compare this to. Don't really have another SP I want to take apart though. Let me, uh, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to go blast. Well, no, let me try this out first. Try one thing at a time, see what fixes it. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go blast this with contact cleaner and see what happens. Don't think it's gonna work though, because I think the, oop, I think that speaker is fine. Okay. Here's the power switch. switching upside down that's why it wasn't going together why don't you guys tell me there we go that, da -dee. game usually though if it's the uh, volume doing this number you get some crackling or something this out see what happens I'll be back in a few minutes here all right so I started cleaning it up and then I just realized how absolutely freaking disgusting that this shell is uh, this thing really needs a bath in some warm water and soap to get it happy uh, I ended up cleaning up the silicone membrane and the d-pad a little bit but it's this thing is still just super gross. Like, I already tried cleaning this, and you can see it's all still crusty. Or maybe not, maybe you don't want to see that, but too bad, too late. Um, so, I'm just going to reshell this stupid thing so I can clean this shell up. Um, hopefully it's not ruined under this sticker, or hopefully the sticker's not, like, hiding something, or, you know, it hasn't worn down around the sticker. Because I'm not really sure I'm digging this Amazing Mirror sticker, but whatever um all i've done so far oh i i tried cleaning up the motherboard as well removing some of that grossness on the pcb revealed some traces so i'm thinking you know even after cleaning up this switch i haven't tested it yet i don't know how well you can hear i don't know where the microphone is maybe it's over here but it's like, it's super crusty, it's super difficult to move, so if it doesn't work after putting it together again, I'm just gonna remove and replace this uh, potentiometer here. I do have another one somewhere, hopefully, um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna be putting it in this shell here. This is one of those new transparent ones, this is the uh, blue, but to be honest, it looks a little bit more purple to me. 
In fact, it looks quite a bit like the uh, Midnight Purple Game Boy Advance, which I'm super okay with. So, I guess at this point, let's start reshelling this bad boy. So, like any other, you gotta remove that hinge piece. It's a long Phillips screw. Then, we gotta get the screen out. And I am super bad at these, but my method has been to just use one of these shitty plastic spudgers, try and uh, loosen up the adhesive without ruining everything, because I want to reuse this eventually. This is not coming out. Oh, there we go. Oops. Let's try not to leave that in the pile of filth. Easy ones. You can just really see how gross this thing is as I'm putting the tool in. Stuff. There we go. It's coming out. Alright, that is all five. Next we should have oops, five tri-wing screws, because it's a zero, zero, 001. this one didn't stick to the screen this time. Hold that out. Set that aside. Okay, so this shell already has hinges in it, but I'm not very happy with them. I'm going to try and transfer these ones over. These are OEM. These are aftermarket, of course. Um, since I need to take them out to clean this shell up anyway, might as well take them out now and use them and reshell it later or whatever the hell I want to do. Uh, now if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you probably saw that I just recently made a tool to help out with this. Uh, it's super helpful, very handy, but it doesn't work very well on the aftermarket hinges, i found works a lot better on the OEM ones. Not 100% sure what the difference is, but it's just my findings. That's 
not working at all here. Oh, you know why? Apparently these are uh, disposable items. I'll be right back. Alright, so I made multiples. Uh, this is actually the original one that I made. Because it doesn't have a bottom. I wonder if Nintendo has an actual tool that they use for this, or used, as in past tense, that they still actually have it. I imagine they do. Okay. Ta-da! Just a quick tangent about these hinges here. Um, I've seen two different types of aftermarket hinges. Yeah, oh yeah, that's much better. Um, one of them has a uh, C-clip up here, whereas this one is riveted with a washer. I found the ones that are riveted with a washer to be significantly better, and that's not saying much because they still suck, um, compared to the ones with the C-clip and the washer. Those ones are just awful all around. Oh, that is so much better. Night and day. Okay. Now I need the screen. And this thing here. And that's my trailing. There's definitely something to be said about having uh, different handles on your different screwdrivers. Like one of these is Phillips, the other is Tri-Wing. As opposed to these new screwdrivers, I keep picking up one thinking it's the other. I'm not liking this screwdriver. Keep slipping when I go to tighten these. that. Next we need this. This is just a long Phillips. Being said, my complaint about the tri wing screwdriver does not apply to the Phillips one. Uh, that doesn't have any LEDs. That's super gross. 
I guess we'll just use the one it came with. I like the uh, original one over the aftermarket one. The original ones are clear, the aftermarket one is clouded. I don't know if I went over that in my last video. This is just the same shell, really. But, blue. Okay, and I'm gonna try something different. I have these green teal-ish buttons. I'm not sure if I like them yet. Maybe they'll grow on me. But if I hit them, it's really not that difficult to swap them out. I'll trim that one. Probably gotta trim that one too. And on occasion, these buttons come with some uh, little extra plastic that needs to be trimmed off. Flush cutters is probably the tool for that job, though. And I'll use the uh, membranes it came with. I still gotta clean the original ones. Well, I suppose I don't have to, but they look super gross, so. Apparently I'm missing one. That's cool. I guess I will reuse that one. Put that in. I lost track of which speaker is which, but it shouldn't matter because they should both work. So, fucked up the A button. <laughs> we can fix it from here. Yeah. There we go. I don't know. I actually do kind of like that. Alright. Usually, when replacing these shoulder buttons, I usually latch the spring in first, then put the hinge in, and then try and swing the uh, button down into place. And as far as these springs go, the curve, there's two sides here, the straight side and then the uh, bent side. The bent side goes against the button. And you can only put the left side on the left, you can't swap them, if I recall correctly. If I'm mistaken about that, let me know. Oops. Helps if you put it in right side up, too. I did a little bit backwards that time, but it still worked. I don't know, it's just, it just you gotta get a feel for it, it takes practice. The power switch in, and because I'm not taking this apart even if it doesn't work, at least not until I get some parts, 
Make sure you put the square nut in for the battery cover. And uh, should just drop on there. There we go. So again, four long screws <clears throat> in each of the corners. And then two short ones in the battery compartment and in the cartridge slot. Okay, and be careful with this one, because if you tighten it too hard, you'll make a mark on the cover there. Alright, pop a game in, battery, buddy cover. Come on. Feels like it's cross-threading. Oh well, tight is tight. Am I right? Alright. Uh, the power switch definitely needs to be cleaned. Yeah, still no sound though. I'm gonna bet the uh, 15 bucks that I paid for this SP that is that potentiometer though. I'm gonna get some parts in. Um, let's see if I can get that fixed. I don't know how well you can see this on screen, but I'm noticing this kind of like shimmer effect on the LCD. I guess it's it has something to do with the interlacing. Does that help out at all? Hmm. Let's see if I can adjust that too. Uh, the way I would adjust that, I would take my um, tester cart, the AGS aging cart, put it in here, and then you would adjust the potentiometer under the battery here to try and correct for that. But otherwise, I'm happy with the shell. Not so happy with the uh, membranes, but I gotta clean those before I can do anything about it. And I gotta clean up the shell, I gotta get a new potentiometer, but that's for another time. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm still super happy that these cleaned up and fixed really easily. Uh, both of them just literally need a battery and some cleaning. Uh, and this one I guess needs a battery cover, but I don't know. I, I got a 3D printed one or I'll use this one. I haven't decided yet. Definitely got to replace that screw though. But in the meantime, I guess, uh, thanks for joining me for another one while I procrastinate doing some chores and errands. Thanks guys.